right, welcome to another installment of the Fragments of Silicon Reviews. Four reviews up this week. The first of which is The Plague Doctor of Vipra. Um, it's a German name, so it's going to have the V sound for W. Like, um, anyway, uh, this is a small point-and-click adventure game. Um, and it's quite literal in its titling as you are the new plague doctor of Vripra. Um, just, uh, you know, you've just, uh, I'm not sure if you've just entered the town, but you're like, you, um, you're replacing the old plague doctor who, well, died a plague. Like, you know, it was kind of a thing. Like, um, and yeah, you are navigating your way through the town of Vipra in order to take care of patients as the resident doctor. Uh, you know, it's like, um, thematically, it's pretty simple. Um, though, obviously, given the subject matter here, it's very heavy as well. Like, because, yeah, uh, you're dealing with people not only who have plague, but they have other um, medical issues. And, like, there's a lady who has uh, thrombrosis. Like, also, since we're talking about medieval medicine, um, we're dealing with medicine in a medieval way. And all that entails, which means um, a lot of le uh, dealing with leeches um, that does come up with the thrombrosis case, um, interestingly enough. Um, in fact, I think the first patient you deal with uh, wants a bloodletting. Oh, uh, no, boy. If you don't know what a bloodletting is, I do envy you. But uh, for those who might not be up on their medieval history. Granted, bloodletting is actually a thing that has a long span of time in terms of me um, medical believability, let's say. That is to say, it goes all the way back to ancient Greece and right up to the Victorian age. Uh, yeah, it's like they were still um, opening people up and draining their blood as far as early as late as the 19th century. And this was based off of a idea of the four humors, like your body produced four fluids. It's like blood, black bile, uh, yellow bile. And I'm trying to remember the fourth. I'm trying to remember it was like saliva, but the idea is that the four humors had to be in balance. And if you had too much blood, like if you had a, that usually meant you had like a headache or an ache or a pain that needed to be dealt with and you needed to be opened up. Like, and apparently there was a sp specific tool, uh, like a bloodletting hook that you used to do this, you know, an actual doctor's implement. I bring this up because you actually need to use this thing in a puzzle. Also, this game kind of highlights the issue with using the low fidelity retro graphic style. Um, that is, if you want to play it the way the game wants you to play it. Because, okay, this game does have the modern accoutrement of displaying the waypoints, but oddly enough, it's... Um, you know, it warns you that um, it considers using waypoints as cheating and robbing you of the experience. And I'm going to say, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Because um, I had to do a fair uh, bit of pixel hunting and shit like that without using the, without turning on the waypoints. It's actually, you can switch it on and off. Um because I didn't know that the thing I needed to get was the thing I needed to get. You know, because it's just a mass of gray pixels. Um, 
and as far as the puzzles and the mechanics all work, it, once again, it's all very traditional point-and-click adventure game stuff, though I'd say even more grounded in reality than last week's game. Um, the problem is uh, it does like even though it's a small adventure game, it does the extra step as I like to call it. That is to say, you have you have the item, or you know the item, and you know the thing that you need to use it. Um, but it turns out you can't quite do that because there's an extra step. Um, and ultimately, I got stuck on one of those puzzles. Uh, it was actually the leech puzzle because it's like I need to get the leeches out of the wall with using some blood. Like um, I had a bowl of blood from the bloodletting, um, but it's like they warned that was too much. You needed to use a thing to um, put on the uh, with the wall crack. I could not find that. And this being a small adventure game. There's only so much you can do or look at. I mean, clearly I did, I have overlooked something, but I'm like, this game isn't that interesting to just poke and prod and hopefully find the thing and, you know, try to brute force it. You know, unfortunate, because this was a pre-release uh, game I was playing partway through. So, no guide. Though outside of that, um, it's a solid adventure game, I'd say. It's just a uh, definite content warning here. Um, as, you know, it's dealing with a lot of uh, heavy subject matter. Um, it's not so much gory as, you know, it's it's going to display some stuff that's um, not pleasing to the eye. Let's say... And if that stuff upsets you, I would look elsewhere. Um, it's also the tone and the atmosphere is all rather bleak for the most part. Because, once again, you are a plague doctor in a German town in the fucking Middle Ages. This ain't gonna, uh, like, outside of, like, the room where it literally has the sunshine... You're not getting a lot of sunshine in this game. You know. And let me see. In terms of pricing, uh, this game clocks in at $10, which I think is a fair enough price. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly how long it ran because, once again, I got stuck. That tends to happen with me in adventure games if I don't know how to get through the things. And, yeah, um, uh, like, like I said, it's a solid adventure game, though probably the weakest um, of the adventure games I've played uh, in recent times. So, um, it's not a, that's not quite the bearing of quality, it's just I've played better, um, like, as far back as last week. And, yeah. Um, Petty, any questions, comments, or concerns about the the Plague Doctor here? Uh, not that I can think of. All right. Um, so yeah, that'll about do it for this game. Be sure to tune in after the break, as Petty Fan is going to be reviewing Starlight Shores.